This is a view from the Terrace Time Capsule. Inside it are some of the greatest things about Scottish football, locked away and preserved for future generations to marvel on in a million years' time. Inside it, we've put in things like Somerset Park, Hibernian's 2016 Scottish Cup win, and Ali McCoy's sex scene from A Shot at Glory. This time around, we are contemplating the split. Some think it's brilliant, some think it's baffling, and to help us talk about it, I brought along a special guest. He is a Dundee United legend and he is currently a player coach with Montrose. Sean Dillon, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having us. Now, Sean, I know Montrose are playing Falkirk tomorrow. I want you to look me in the eyes right now and tell me you're going to smash them. I'll be trying my best, buddy. <laughs> That's not good enough, I need guarantees. <laughs> Do you want me to put a Stenhouse Muir top underneath while I'm playing? Oh my God, could you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a chat about that later, no problem. Excellent. We will we'll hold you to that. Now, we're talking about the split, and as we mentioned, you featured in one of the most important pre-split fixtures in recent memories, and that was a game between Dundee United and Aberdeen in 2013. Before we even look at that match, talk about the split. Were you aware of what it was before you started playing in Scotland? No. <laughs> no idea. Um, and when I first came over, I signed in January. We finished ninth that season. So obviously, I was kind of getting the, my head around the fact that we were going to play the bottom five teams um, again. But it wasn't until the following season that we realised what was, mm -hmm. you know, what was actually happening. And then obviously, you, don't, you start learning about the fact that a team in seventh can finish with more points than a team in sixth and probably have more win bonuses. But. <laughs> not actually be in the top six. So um, I was quite lucky. I, I think we had eight in a row, top six after that. So it, reluctant to say, but kind of became the norm for us to be in the top six and, and to be playing, you know, the old firm or, you know, usually Aberdeen. But yeah, it was, it's an interesting thing. It's obviously unique um, and it probably, well, it was unique to, to the Premier League, but mm -hmm. it's going to happen to us now with League One and League Two now in the next few weeks. Now, Sean, let's talk about the top six. Us as fans, we've got our opinions on it, but for you as a player, what's your thoughts on it? Is it a big deal? You know, no disrespect to the bottom six, but it's not five. The, the games aren't as big, like, you know, and um, like the first two seasons I was at the club, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but Rangers won the league on the last day of the season at Tannadice, and then Celtic won the seat. The, the league at the last day of Tannadice. So, you know, to be involved in them games, even though you're not the one that's going for the title, it's still massive, like... Sean, let's talk about that match between Dundee United and Aberdeen that took United into the top six. That game turned out to be a financial lifesaver for United. What was the pressure like going into that tie? It's funny, right? Everybody talks about it now. We had no idea what was going on before <laughs> that. And I'm glad because... God only knows how we would have felt going into that game. <laughs> we didn't know how tight things were, and I think the financial implication of, of us finishing outside the top six that year would have been a bit of a disaster. But yeah, we hadn't a clue going into that game. It was, it was just a buzz of top six. When Rory Boulding scores that goal, what was the feeling like at the time? Can you describe what it was like to be in the stadium, the reaction from the fans, the reaction from the people around you? It's class. Like, when you get a late, late winner, like, you know what it's like as fans, like, you have done it. I always say that I'm not a fan. I've never been... I can't claim to be a die-hard fan. Not the way Dundee United fan, like a proper, you know, die-hard fan is, but... But, yeah, when you're out on the pitch and you get a last-minute winner and... Sport, of course, it's, there's more to it than that. It's, it's not just a standard league game. There's more riding on it. Obviously, you know, the, the director's already opened the stand was <laughs> probably sweating at that stage. Do you remember your own celebration when the ball hit the back of the net? Uh, I usually just kind of get a real one of those. I never used to celebrate with the lads. If somebody scores and runs off to the far corner and you have to run <laughs> 70 yards, by the time I get up there, the lads have all done that and they're walking back, so I'm kind of just tapping each other. And then I've got to go around and get back further than what they have to get back to, to get in place, so... Probably after the game, that's the best. It's nice to walk off the pitch and, and clap the fans that are applauding you and feel that buzz and see that buzz rather than fans, you know, hanging over the edge of the barrier trying to tell you what you've done wrong. And <laughs> your, your, your last game at, at Dungeon United, you were involved in a fracas. Was I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you were. What, was, yeah. what, what did they say to you? Just that one day, I just, I don't know what it was, I was standing on the edge of the box and I just felt like he was coming for me and I was just like, 
I'm after giving everything I've got here today. Like, that's... I might be shy. <laughs> I might not be technically gifted or whatever else. I might not be able to beat 10 players. But I've given you everything I've got today. My question was basically, look, do you think I haven't tried here? That, that was all I was, I was trying to say. You know, do you think that I haven't given 100%? And of course, Lordy Ellis comes over and grabs me like I'm <laughs> about to start around a nightclub. And <laughs> it all looks ridiculous, like, do you know what I mean? It was, nothing was ever going to happen. And I just clocked eyes with, with this guy. And I, see, if he walked by me now, I couldn't tell you what he looks like. I, honest to God, I couldn't. I just. Sean, you might not be able to recognise him, but coming out just now. <laughs> <laughs> You left Dundee United in 2017 to join Montrose and your signing coincided with a real boom period in the club because a couple of months later, you've uh, won the first league title in something like 23 years. Tell me about what it's like to play for Montrose and arguably one, be one of the most important signings of the last 20 years. I've loved it. I've, I've had a super time. Um, it was a culture shock. So to leave a, a club like Dundee United and then drop down to, to League Two in Montrose to, to yourself, was that a culture shock? A little bit, a little bit. You know, being so well looked after at United to then there's your kit, hope it fits, wash it yourself, <laughs> you know, that type of stuff. And so it was just kind of being back to what I had done many, many years before that. Like, but um, the lads made it so easy for me. Like, I, 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 I honestly can't praise them enough. Like, you know, just everybody that was involved and the boys were just immense yeah. with me, like the squad. Talk about that title win because you and Peter Head were battling out the top of the table and you ended up winning it by just a point. Or were you nervous going into that final? Horrendous. Really? I was, and I was brutal. Like, I, you know, <laughs> I was honest to God, I was. Like, me man and dad came over for the game. Oh, I was, I was honest to God, I was terrible. Like, like, I was really bad that day, like, really poor. Like, I feel really um, bad for saying you're the best signing in the last 20 years after, <laughs> oh, mate, after hearing that. <laughs> you know, you, mate, I got, I got three or four Player of the Year trophies that night at, the, at, an, at an award ceremony. And I'm thinking it's just as well these were inscribed <laughs> yesterday because <laughs> I was, you know, that was really bad. Um, I've had some really cool, you know, good feelings. But that, that goal going in, not the final whistle, the goal going in, I can't describe the, the, like the rush on us. It was, I, I, still, I can't get my head around how I felt that time. Oh, this could be the finish and this could be the vital point that Montrose need to get up to League One. What a that, goal! I don't know, I let out a scream and it was just... I have a laugh about it now, like, because it was just... The buzz of that feeling was unbelievable. And then they kept coming at us, and I was like, you don't need to come at us, there's nothing. <laughs> you have nothing to play for, like. <laughs> you know, stop, like, you know, Elgin. And we knew a couple of the boys that were playing there and the staff, and I'm like, you know, just... Just relax, like. <laughs> Keep it down there, he's like, grand, it's no problem. And then, yeah, the relief of the last... Obviously, the final whistle going, and... Away from Montrose, Sean, you have been branching out into broadcasting and oh. work with uh, Dundee United Television. You've become not just a, a favourite on the pitch, a favourite off the pitch as well. How did you get into that? I got asked to come in and commentate in the game. That's how it happened. Yeah, just, do you fancy doing commentating at the weekend? Obviously, I, was, I wasn't, wasn't doing anything at the time uh, with, with, with COVID and that. And then about half an hour later, I was, listen, we're doing a pre-show and there's this fella called Ali's coming in to do it. And, and I said, yeah, I'm for that and I have a laugh about that and let's give it a go. And I'm joined for it as always by the Dublin Dreamboat, Sean Dillon. Morning, Sean. Morning, buddy. How are you doing? I've seen you on a seesaw. Good. It's going very well, thanks, buddy. How are you? Top of the bill. Top of the bill. We've seen you and Ali Heather in different parts of the stadium. One thing, though, Sean, we did agree to meet in the Jerry Care. What are you doing over there? I'm sure you said Eddie Thompson, pal. Sean, mate, we're meant to meet in the Jerry Care. Ah, uh, you said here. And perhaps most notably, we've seen you dressed up as a... Well, not dressed up as a snowman, your face digitally imposed <laughs> into a snowman. Sean, how's it going? A little bit cold today, buddy. How are you? <laughs> not too bad. Ah, you are looking a wee bit chilly. With fans not being able to get into the grounds at the moment, how important do you think it is to put on a production like that to try and... It's so important that I'm dressed as a snowman. I've fallen <laughs> off walls and... Yeah. Uh, I think it is important because, again, it, it, you're, you're trying to make a connection with the fans. That's all you're trying to do. And, um, I think the I think the lads are have done a really good job. I don't count myself in that at all. I, you know, I play down the part I play in it because I'm just there for have a bit of a laugh and yeah, I do love it. I I, I do love it. Shall we uh, get indoors? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. I'll race you, man. <laughs> what? <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> 
So what do we think then? Does the split deserve to go into the time capsule? Should this be... <laughs> 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 what, do you, what do you think then? Um, we'll start with yourself, Joel. Do you think that the split should go into the time cap? Oh man, I know some people don't uh, don't like it, but I, I love it. It's it's, it's it's a bit daft. A bit of Scottish football has to be in there. I I wasn't sure about a split when it first came round, but I must admit I have I have learned to, to love it. So by all means, put it in. Oh, yourself, Sean. All good, me. All good. Trolling. There is the Premiership split. You are going into the time capsule, locked away for all eternity. Thank you, Sean. That was brilliant, that.